If we don't learn, the same lessons will be sent to us over and over again until we do. I've got a story to share. Hello there. Thank you for being here. This is Life Lessons by me, Nicole Hanselman. If it's your first time, please subscribe. Otherwise, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to do a three-part series. Yes, and in each of them, it will have my three defining moments, life-defining moments. Today's one has a story of doggos. <laughs> Scary. Yeah, I got a knife. Like, I'm going to call it a knife point moment <laughs> to share. But before I do that, you will know that we get the same lesson sent to us over and over again until we surrender and say, okay, I've learned my lesson. Have you learned yet? No. Bang. Have you learned yet? No. Bang. It will still keep on coming. The narrative might change, but the lessons still stand. We also know that we tend to forget about our, our privileges. We forget to appreciate the things we have in life. Half of the things we have, if not all of the things we have, were once upon a time a wish. You wish to have that spouse, those children. Oh, I'd like to start a family. Oh, yes. Now you have it. Oh, I'd like to have my degree, my master's. Oh, I'd like a job. You didn't even define what sort of a job you wanted. You were desperate for a job. Now you have it. Yeah, that's what we are as human beings. So before I start, I share my story. I'm going to share 10 things we need to do to make sure we appreciate our lives right now. Number one, gratitude. Always be thankful. Always be thankful. Find ways, little ways of being thankful and remembering to be thankful. The Muslims, I admire what they have. When they bop after a meal, they go like, Bismillah. Mm, I hope I'm using the right word. I think that's the word. I like that. Is it uh, Bismillah or Alhamdulillah or something like that? I like that they do that. They, that way you can never forget. Christians pray before their meals too. Amazing. If you're walking to work, you bump into something on your way to work. Remember to stop and say, you know what? Thanks for my faith. Thanks for my job. I've got a job to go to. Somebody wishes they had that job. They are happy to walk even three miles to a workplace, to somewhere, to something to do. So let's be grateful. We spoke about what it did before. If you missed that video, go back and watch that video. Very important to be grateful at all times. Very beneficial in our life. The other thing we need to do is give. We could give anything. We could give our time, volunteer our time to do some stuff or just give those things that we stop maybe loving or appreciating or finding joy, having. It could be a, an outfit, this old thick thing kind of outfit, the button's falling off and you're like, oh, that old thing, the button's falling off. No, somebody's like, somebody else will be like, I've never had such a thing in my life. They'll appreciate it, they'll love it. So it's coming from a good home to another good home where to be loved even more. So just give, and then the, that smile that person gives when they're receiving, that thank you, the appreciative gesture that you receive from them, amazing. So it's something you need to do. Number three, be in the present moment. How we do we do that? Meditate. Not necessarily, but you know, I love meditation. I, I got to put meditation in there. But be in the present moment. Forget about the past, the past worries. The, it's happened, it's been done, done and dusted. Don't worry about it anymore. There's nothing much you can do to undo it. No, the future, you can only envision the future. And you have a choice of envisioning, envisioning a brighter future, a better future. So... It's, why don't you just leave that for now and leave the other one for now and just be on the now and just check oh my children are happily playing oh i've got youtube videos to watch oh. <laughs> just being in the present moment what they call smelling the roses amazing isn't it stop comparing yourself to others stop comparing up stop comparing completely just stop that we don't know other people's journey we don't know the starting point they might have had a more privileged starting point than you have oh they finished their masters and stuff and oh i'm struggling to even finish my degree i don't even have the fees you don't know you don't know. they might have had sponsorship you just you got to work and pay for your degree you don't know their journey stop comparing you will just feel that burden up lifted from your shoulders stop comparing live your life be grateful for your life 
Number five, we need to downsize. Yeah, we can downsize. With downsize, it can be tricky. People think downsizing in terms of just houses, big houses, and stuff. So those big houses might not necessarily bring you happiness. So if it's not bringing you happiness, maybe you can downsize. But downsizing can be anything, including just the furniture in your house. You keep having all these chairs, all these things that you thought, oh, I will have lots of guests. How many times do you have lots of guests and you need all those chairs for? How many times? Once a year, then you don't need it. And it could also save you some money. If you don't size and sell those stuff, save up money. Then sizing makes you be grateful of the small environment you are in. It makes you happier. Six, have a different perspective in life. Look at things differently from a different angle. If it's that work that you walk to, just look at it this way. You know what? There's somebody who hasn't got any at all. This, just look at things differently and you'll notice that you have a lot of things to be appreciated for. And if that still doesn't work, visit people in the hospitals. Go and visit people in the hospital. You'll appreciate health so much. S somebody will tell you, I just wish to be out there breathing that fresh air. I wish I could feed myself. I wish I could do this. Oh, I, I, now I just want some time to just cuddle my family and I can't. I'm not even allowed to do. You know, all those little things then you appreciate. You appreciate the pain they are in. Mm. You look at them and you can almost feel their pain. And the other thing, let go of hatred, let go of negativity. If you have negative people in your life, it's time to tell them, okay, it's been nice knowing you, bye-bye. Go on to the next place. Yeah, get rid of negativity. You don't need that. It will only drain your energy. Focus on our faith. Let's find anchor in our faith, in our beliefs. Our faith gives us a positive life in li um, light in life. It makes us see things in a more positive way and gives us the strength to keep going. Number 10 smile smile sometimes it's hard sometimes it's difficult when you find it hard to smile and you can't think of reason or smile just shut your eyes and envision think of something nice something that makes you happy at that person that makes you happy or that place that makes you happy that just close your eyes if you still can't do that you just say your mind still wanders forgive yourself if your mind still wanders but just like try and force it just you'll find yourself smiling eventually it does work. Otherwise, what is that story of mine? Years ago, when I was about 23, 24, whatever, young starting life, got a my, I don't know, no, my first employment, was it first or something? They're about, I was employed, I have to brag about this, in a five-star hotel, in a five-star spa that was in the hotel. <laughs> And right opposite date, I have to brag about this as well. That was my business. It was like a relaxation center. And some of those spa members or customers, if they couldn't afford it or they wanted to save some money, they'll just walk and go opposite across to have the same service. But sometimes the same people, yeah, for half the price. <laughs> So it was fun. And you know, when you work in such an industry, you get a lot of tips. So I used to get a lot of tips, you yeah? know, the money used to come. So there's this one time that uh, after doing it for a while, uh, payday, I don't know why they used to pay us in envelopes, but but they did pay us in envelopes. So that day, packed all my days out. Oh, being an uh, Edward, the tips were huge. All that tips and i became greedy i didn't want to leave my money in the locker and it's end month i need to pay rent in at mines i need to pay rent for the business so i got greedy and i didn't want to leave that money behind i wanted to carry all that money <laughs> so what it is the hotel the spa was let's say here the sea was right down and down and across the road just right opposite was my business but where i stayed was behind my business but the only way to get there was through an alleyway. So you had to go all the way this way or all the way that way. There was no shortcut. And that area was dark. Was dark. It got dark at night. We finished late, I think about 10 o'clock or 10.30 thereabouts. So after work, we finished. Most of my colleagues lived far. So they'll need the work bus that will drop them down or whatever. So they were getting onto the bus. As they were waiting for the bus, I started walking. And I thought, 
Shall I ask one of them to walk me at least halfway? Oh, what do I do? We had one that had big muscles, big guy. And I thought, Shall I ask him? And I almost went back to do that because I know I've got money in me. And what I've done with that money, you know, I don't know whether it's uh, instincts or fear or attracting flame to your life, but whatever it was, I thought of stashing that money down south and just kept some with me yeah put uh, some of them uh do not even uh, kenya shillings or whatever i'd stash it yeah where the cherry is that's where the money was so i did start walking and i just decided to keep walking as soon as i, I got out of their side two people came from behind uh this doesn't feel right Shall I walk really fast or I'll look like I'm panicking? I knew I could run, but I was wearing my heels that day. Oh, God. I, I could have. But again, running, you just don't want to take such chances. You can trip. It's dark. and uh. So anyway, they stopped me with their knives. I don't know, knives or dagger, whatever they were. It's scary. And uh, they were like, come out of the road. They asked me to go into the bush. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, you don't want to wish that to your worst enemy. It's the worst thing. And I knew there's nobody who's going to pass through that road in the next, I don't know how long. It wasn't a busy road, especially that time. You'd meet just one or, or two odd people. And now I'm right in the bush where they can't even imagine somebody being there. I was cooperative, I was blind, you know. Luckily, I didn't have my best pieces. I was bling, I was cooperative. I told them, okay. And I thought they might have seen me in the day they knew me because wherever I used to go and eat when I'm not at my main job, it was the local center, a uh, local like shop. And I was like, maybe they, they've seen me, they've seen these things before, so just cooperate. But I just took them off and I was giving it to them. And they saw I was cooperating and then they took my phone. It was the flip phone back then, you know. And when I saw they were nice and they're listening to me, I decided to push my chances and ask for my SIM card back. They did give me my SIM card back, but one of them started a new craze. They're like, have you got any CDs? Asking their partner and asking me, have you got any CDs? Like C-O-N-D-O-M? Uh, please, for the love of God, take all I have, but don't just take everything even if you want me to meet you tomorrow to give you some more please but don't. and i knew in my heart of hearts apart from the cherry there is more money down there and they'll know i'll be because they had asked me over and over again if i had more stuff they would taken my shoes they would taken my anything they could take they took uh, oh jesus i've never prayed like that in my life oh they god just saved my life i had a feeling if they find it they'll they're going to kill me eventually because they'll be very angry at me for lying to them uh, i prayed i've never prayed that much in my life i've never done it so anyway they told me to stay there they're coming back stay there you're coming back and i thought they're going to buy those bloody series of find sam to come back to me and i was just god if you save me from this, I promise God everything that I could find for himself. <laughs> I promise God. I pleaded with them and told them, you know, my mom's got only me. Please spare my life. She only depends on me. I told them everything. And now they're going to come back. I stayed there for something that felt like eternity until I realized maybe they're not coming back. And I haven't got any shoes on. This place is bushy. There are thorns and everything. I told myself, you know what? Just crawl back. Uh, you just telling them no you just want to go home if they can let you go home if you find them out there but i went there but there was nobody i just kept on crying and like that going home crying and telling them oh. <laughs> i got home oh that thing shook me and traumatized me so bad oh, i couldn't sleep it affected me so it was it was it was nasty you can't wish anybody that it was nasty but what do you learn from this, Nicole? Is that you have to appreciate life. Don't wait for those life-defining moments to start pleading with God and appreciating your life. And knowing it. that's when you're like, oh no, don't wait for those moments. Always remember to be appreciative of your life and the protection that you're given for free. It's something you take for granted. You hear these things in the news, you read it in the papers, people die. Imagine if I died that uh, if I died there. 
how would it have been found? Because nobody would have thought, apart from maybe they'll smell later, nobody would have found me. Nobody would have known where I was. It would have taken so long for me to be discovered. Anyway, that was it for me. That was the, a very, very big life-defining moment for me. As, uh, my recommendation for today, I'm going to share a link down here. Check it out. If you're going through anything, you need a life coach, you need encouragement, you need... Just go to this website, check it out, and you'll get the help you need because sometimes we can't do it on our own. We need that help. And that's, that's it for today. Discussion for today. Have you got any life-defining moment? And what is it that you promised God? <laughs> and that's, that's it for today. I really appreciate you. Bye.